السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وحبيبنا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتح الهارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين First of all, I would like to thank MCC for hosting me to start this new series. And I would like uh, also to pass a special welcome to everyone who is attending these classes, which will be once a week for 12 weeks, inshallah. Uh, in these classes, we are going to talk about the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about whom Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said uh, in uh, Ayah 29 of Surah Al-Fatih, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, Muhammadur Rasulullah, والذين معه أشداء على الكفار رحماء بينهم تراهم ركعا سجدا يبتغون فضلا من الله ورضوانا سماهم في وجوههم من أثر السجود محمد is the messenger of Allah and those with him are forceful against the disbelievers merciful amongst themselves You see them bowing and prostrating in prayer, seeking bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his pleasure. Their mark is on their faces from the traces of prostration. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam praised his companions and he said, Ashabi kan nujum, biayyihum uhtadaytum muqtadaytum. My companions are like uh, the stars. Whichever of them you follow, you will be truly and rightly guided. So in these classes, we will, inshallah, learn about the stories of the companions, their marvels, their etiquettes, their manners, their utter devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will dig into their sincere love to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Of course, we are going to choose some of the companions, not all of them. But before we go any further, I want everyone to say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad, whenever you hear me mention his blessed name, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, if we ask ourselves, who is the Sahabi? Who is the companion of the Prophet? The Islamic scholar Ibn Hajar defined a Sahabi as a person who believed in Prophet Muhammad وسلم, met him and died as a Muslim. So this definition of the Sahabi includes those who spent long time or short time with the Prophet وسلم, Those who reported or did not report hadith from Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, Those who joined or did not join a battle with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those who saw him or did not see him due to some reasons like blindness, such as Ibn Umm Maktoum. Now let's stop for a second and ask ourselves, what made the elite of the people like Abu Bakr, Az-Zubayr ibn al-Awwab, Uthman ibn Affan, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf, Zayd ibn Haritha, Mus'ab ibn Umayr, Abu Ubaid ibn al-Jarrah, Khalid ibn al-Walid, Sa'd ibn Mu'az, and the list goes on and on. What made these people hasten to follow Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What made them leave everything behind and follow him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? What made the weak, poor people with him? What made them be with him? What made them obey him when, when they know that he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, had no money and so many challenges were, were facing him? What made the most powerful Umar ibn al-Khattab go on his way to behead Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his own sword and come back to cut off the heads of the enemies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the same sword? What made their hearts strong and firm on the right path? 
what was the strong magnet that attracted their hearts? There's only one answer to all these questions. It's the true love of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But why and how did they love him so much? How did they love him the way they loved him? Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He loved him the most. He loved him to the degree that he associated his prophet's name with his own name. And we hear this all the time during the adhan when, when the mu'adhan says, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. Now imagine that you love something. You keep it to yourself. You hide it from others. You keep it away from everyone. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not keep his habib for himself. He rather gave us the permission to love him. And he even promised a big reward to those who love him. In uh, Ayah 31 of Surah Ali Imran, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us about the reward of those who love him and follow him. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul in kuntum tuhibbuna Allah fattabi'uni yuhibbkum Allah wa yaghfir lakum dhunubakum. Wallahu ghafur ar-Rahim. Say, if you love Allah, then follow me and Allah will love you and forgive your wrong actions. Allah is ever forgiving and he is the most merciful. The companions, may Allah be pleased with them, understood Allah's order and acted accordingly. They loved the Prophet Wasallam. And consequently, their words and action were a physical indication of this love. Uh, they, they willingly sacrificed their lives and their money in Allah's cause and due to their love to the Prophet. So, uh, this love was clear uh, in many different situations. And today, inshallah, we will go over different examples that clearly show the real love of the companions of uh, the companions to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our first example will be, uh, of course, about Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, who believed in the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and loved him a unique love. We know that he kept making dua and dua and asked Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to make dua for him, to accompany him in his, in, uh, his journey, in his migration, hijra to Medina. So during the hijra, during this hijra journey with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and right at the entrance of the cave, before entering it to hide from the non-believers who were following them, Sayyidina Abu Bakr said to the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, wait here, O Prophet, until I check in, I, I check that there is no danger inside. So Abu Bakr entered the cave and quickly blocked all the holes in that cave. He wanted to make sure that there is no snake, no scorpion, no nothing that might hurt the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Love. This is true love. Being sure that the cave is safe, he asked Sayyidina Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to enter. Now, they are in the cave, hiding. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was sleeping on Sayyidina Abu Bakr's lap. And suddenly, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu saw one, one open hole he had not blocked. So he blocked it with his foot. Just a little later, something stung Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. He withstood the pain in order not to bother Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa during his sleep. He was crying from the pain. 
until one of his tears fell on the blessed face of the Prophet So the Prophet woke up. He looked at Abu Bakr and asked him why he was crying. And Abu Bakr immediately replied, may I ransom my mother and father for you, O Prophet. Consequently, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu spat lightly on the place that hurt uh, Abu Bakr, and Abu Bakr was immediately cured. So here we had an example of Sayyidina Abu Bakr's love to the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted to sacrifice himself just to make sure that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi is safe. Uh, other love uh, incidents um, by the companions to, towards Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the love of Sayyidina Zayd ibn Harisa. So Sayyidina Zayd, who was Sayyidina Zayd? Sayyidina Zayd was eight years old when he was traveling with his mother and uh, some people kidnapped him. So his father and his family were so sad that they, they lost their child. And his father did not uh, despair of finding him. Zaid was sold in the Sukh of Gaz, and uh, the person who bought him was say, uh, Hakim ibn Hizam. He bought him with a lot of money, 400 dirham at that time. And he gave him to his aunt, Khadija bin Tukwilid. And later on, Sayyidina Khadija became the wife of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and she gave him Zaid as a gift. So his father kept uh, looking for him. But Sayyidina Zaid was living with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, enjoying his time with him, learning from him, loving him. So his father, Haritha, you know, he is Zaid ibn Haritha. So his father, Haritha, uh, who, uh, got the news from some people who were visiting uh, Mecca that they met his son. So he immediately went, traveled to uh, Mecca uh, with his brother and his uh, uh, son to talk to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when he, when he came to him, he said to him, Yabna Abdullah, Yabna Abdul Muttalib, Yabna Hashim, Yabna Sayyida Qome, Antum Ahlul Harami Wajirani, Antum Ahlul Harami Wajirani, Wain the Baiti Hita Fukuna Lani, what to Tremuna Al Asir, Jinaka Fibnina Indi, Femnun Ali, Femnun Alina, Wahsin Lena Fidae, Fainna Senna Fahulaka Fida. So he told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he called him by uh, the son of Abdullah, the, uh, he called him uh, the son of the leader. You are the true good people who, who are good, who uh, feed the uh, uh, captures. And we came, we want to take our son back from you. We want to buy our son back from you. So make it, make it a good fida, make it a good ransom. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, who, 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 is, who are you talking about? And they said, Zayd ibn Harista. And he said, anyone else? He said, no. Well, Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I don't want any ransom from you. Call him. If he chose to go with you, then I will give him to you without any, anything in, uh, um, in return. But if he, stay, if he decided to stay, then I will not say, tell him no. I will not ask him to go with you. And his father was so happy that he told Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you, you made uh, a just uh, decision. We are so pleased with your answer. And of course, when uh, uh, they called uh, Zaid and uh, 
Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, do you know these? He said, yes, my father, my, uh, my, uh, my uncle, and uh, my brother. So he said, uh, you, are, you have the choice and you are uh, free to choose either to stay with me or to go with them. Immediately, without hesitation, Zayd radiallahu anhu said, مَا أَنَا بِالَّذِي أَخْتَارُ عَلَيْكَ أَحَدًا أَنْتَ مِنِّي بِمَكَانِ الْأَبِ وَالْأُمْ I'm not going to choose anyone else than, other than you, Ya Rasulullah. You, uh, uh, that time he wasn't. So um, uh, no one other than you. So you are like a father and a mother. So his father said, Whoa, Zayd, would you choose slavery over freedom? Would you choose to be with any other people than your father and uncle? And he said, yes. So what has Zayd radiallahu an so in Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How did he love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so much? Well, in return, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him. And whenever one of his wives would say anything about him, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would say, Leave me with, uh, uh, leave me with, uh, with him. Uh, if they say he did not do this, he did not do that, he would say, no, 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 leave him. If Allah wanted uh, him to do it, he would have done it. He used to love him. He never, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, never told him, why did you do that and why you did not do that? Another, another, um, incident that shows the love of the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was truly manifested during the battle of Uhud. When uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was uh, surrounded by the non-Muslims, uh, they wanted to kill him. So the Sahaba formed a fence in front of him and to the back of him just to get the arrows to the, so to have the arrows hit him, they hit them instead of hitting Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they would say, "Our death is not is is to be today. You are not going to die. We are going to get all all the all the arrows." So this was their their love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They sacrificed him with their lives. And during this battle, not only uh, men showed their love, but also women showed their true love to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There was a woman from Bani Dinar whose father, brother, husband, and son had just died in the battle of Uhud. And she thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they are all set. That, that they all sacrificed their lives for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She, she knows that they are martyrs and they will be in high heavens. But she was so worried about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she was so relieved when she saw him. She said, she said a few words that were, are as valuable as gold today. She said, كل مصيبة بعدك جلل يا رسول الله. Oh Prophet, all, oh Prophet, as long as you are safe from any harm, then all calamities, all calamities are easy. Another example, Sayyidina Khubayb ibn Adi, when, when, رضي الله عن, when he was taken as a hostage in Mecca by the non-believers, and was taken far to be beheaded, he listened to what he said to them. Now, now listen to that. He gave them, uh, he said, give me the time to, to close, uh, give me the time just to pray two rakas. So he prayed two rakas quickly and said to the person in charge, if you... If, if it wasn't for that fact that um, uh, it wasn't for the fact that you would wrongly think that I'm scared of death, uh, I would have prolonged my prayer. Before beheading him, 
they tortured him and then they raised him on a stick to behead him. They asked him, do you prefer that you are safe with your family and Muhammad is in your place? He said, I swear by Allah. I swear by Allah. I don't love to be safe with my family. Uh, 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 to be safe with my family while Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is touched with even a thorn on, in his foot. He means even if I am safe, me and my family are all safe, even if we, if we are uh, all killed, then I don't wish for the Prophet to be in my place at all not even be hurt with a thorn in his foot. When Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away, here, listen to this amazing uh, also incident. Sayyidina Bilal bin Rabah could not call for the, for the Adhan anymore. He even could not stay in Medina. So he asked the permission of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu an to go to Sham to live there. And he did. And at his deathbed, his wife was crying. And she said, how oh, sad. And he radiallahu an said to her, rather say, what a joy. Tomorrow we shall meet the loved ones, Muhammad and his companions. He was so happy that he's going to die so that he would reunite with his Habib and the other companions who died before him. This is the true love that filled the hearts of the companions of the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are just غَيْضٌ min فَيْضٌ a few stories, and the list goes on and on and on. Now the question each and every one might, uh, might, ha- might be thinking of is, how can we follow the companions in their love to the Prophet? The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave us an answer to this, uh, to this question to this, uh, in one of his narrations. He said to Abu Huraira, Ya Abu Huraira, إن شئت ألا تفارقني يوم القيامة حتى تدخل معي الجنة أحبني حبا لا تنسان وعلم أنك إن أحببتني لم تترك ثلاثا So Abu Huraira uh, uh, was talking to Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم and Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم said Oh Abu Huraira, if you wish not to be separated from me on the day of judgment until you get into paradise with me then love me, a love. You won't forgive me. You, you, you won't forget me. And, and know that when you love me, you will not leave three things. Being guided as per my guidance. Longing to me. Sending lots of salawat to me. So let's all take this now as a chance to renew our love to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam let's make this love greater than any other love we may have in our hearts dunya children wealth anything education anything anything you might think of Let's follow the Prophet and his Sunnah and let this following lead us to paradise. Let our love for the Prophet not limited to just words. This love has to be clear in our actions. And that can happen by following his orders and avoiding his prohibitions. Let our love make us 
loving to be, to have the same manners that Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And one of the most important things is husnul khuluq, having good manners. And uh, having good manners, once Sayyidina Abu Huraira was talking also about, about it with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, alayka bi husnul khuluq ya Abu Huraira. Fakala lahum, wa ma husnul khuluq ya Rasulullah. What is husnul khuluq? Qal, أن تعفو عمن ظلمك وتعطي من حرمك وتق... وتصل من قطعك So you would forgive people. This is the essence of the good manners. You would forgive them if they mistreat you, if they do anything bad to you. Just take it with an open heart. Expand your heart. ألم نشرح لك الصبر. Haven't we expanded your heart? Let's have this quality of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, applied to our heart also. So be good to people, to those who, who mistreat you, who, who do bad things to you. Forgive them. Do you think this is easy? No. No, it's not. But when you remember that whatever Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, did is the best, you're going to be like him. Get connected to those who don't want to, to, to get connected to you. You can strength. Keep good ties with, you, with, your, with your relatives. And give those who deprive you Some people might deprive you of their love. Love them. Some people might deprive you of their money. Don't don't be like them. Get connected to them. Show them the good way. Show them good manners so they would feel sorry that they did something bad to you. Our our, uh, true happiness, real true happiness in this life is to have a good love relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his Habib, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and with the Holy Quran. And this is farhatuna fi dunya al-alaqatu ma'allah wal-habib wal-Quran. This is our love in this dunya. This is our happiness in this dunya, to have true love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put special light in our hearts when we love him. This light will direct us during ease and also during hardship. This light will will make us follow the manners of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With this light, when we we, we will understand what it means when we say, اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. اهدنا الصراط المستقيم. One of the narrations say, explain, one of the uh, people explained that this صراط المستقيم is Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ya Allah, we want you to guide us to follow Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who is on the right path whose path will lead us to the high heavens. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put special special light in our hearts when we love him. And with this light, love itself will have another different meaning. It will be manifested in so many different ways. One of which is the love that that runs in the family. The love of the husband to his wife, the love of the of the wife to her husband, the love of the parents to their children and offsprings, the love of the children to their parents and grandparents. So different love relationship starts in the family. And when the family is secure with love, then each family will have this love. So 
the whole society is secure. The families are secure. We will not see these these uh, countless problems that we are facing in this society nowadays. It all starts within the family, within the house, within the house. When we are able to build a, a safe and a firm and a happy house, then the society will be happy. And this happiness does not come just of getting all and everything that we need in this dunya. No, it comes from the close relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And with, the, with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, with the Holy Quran. This is what the Sahaba understood. This is what the companions of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had in, in their hearts toward their Prophet. So with this light, with this light that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would put in the hearts when we love him, when we love his, his Prophet, the the family ties will be will will have a different meaning. By default, parents love their children. They do their best to provide them the best life. Wealth, education, everything they might need for this dunya. But this love can be a different love. When the parents want to guarantee that their children are saved in the day after, in the year after. This is our concern in raising our children. We have to have them saved in the day after. This is the true love to our family, to our children. So Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed us the way to do it. And he said, bring up your children, raise your children to my love, to, to the love of the Sahaba. And this is what we have to do with our children. So when they know, when the parents know that their children are saved in the day after this is their happiness. This is the true happiness. A mom would see her children uh, in love with the Quran, in love of, with doing so much, so much good things for themselves, for their family, for society, helping others. No selfishness. So the parents would work hard to get that fulfilled. They would choose good friends for their children. And this is very important because a sahib sahib, the friend is going to uh, guide your child the same way that he is to, to his path, to the path that he follows. So we have to know who our friend, who the friends of our children are. We cannot, we cannot just leave them. Oh, we trust our children. No. Shaitan did not die, dies. Shaitan is there. He he goes in the blood of the uh, in the bloodstream of the of the person. He would keep whispering, 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 whispering until the first thing happens. And it's so difficult at the beginning when it happens. But when this thin, sin is repeated, it gets easier until more sins are, are made. And which, with each sin, there will be a dot on the heart, a dot of blackness on the heart. If this if this blackness is not erased with istighfar, with tawbah, then one day the whole heart will be covered with blackness and the person would not be able to differentiate between right and wrong, between true and false. And that's why you see people are heedless. They don't know what they are doing. 
They kill each other and they don't know why they killed each other. They do bad things and they don't know what, what made them do bad things. You will hear it right and left that people are having anxiety, people are bored, people, people are, uh, are not happy. And the cure to this is to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is to have a good relation to Allah with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what the Sahaba understood. This is what the companions of the Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam understood and applied to their lives. They loved Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And their love was manifested in their actions. It wasn't just words. We love you, Ya Rasulullah. Okay? What are you doing with this love? What? So the parents are working hard. They would care about their the recitation and the memorization of the Quran for their children. They would instill the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their hearts. Now imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a look into our hearts and our children's hearts. And he finds it filled up with his love and with the love of his Habib, وسلم, the love of the Quran. Then Allah will be satisfied with us. Allah will be happy with us. Allah will be pleased with us. And by this, we will be of those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised in and mentioned in several, several times in the Holy Quran, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah Al-Mujadila, Surah Al-Bayna, when he says, Radiyallahu anhum wa radwa'an. Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with him. He is pleased with them because of the righteous life they lived. And they will be pleased with Allah because of the countless reward he prepared for them. So our family is, should have a different meaning of love. The parents should be the model for their children. If you don't have something, you cannot give it to others. You cannot spread it. If you did not taste the true love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then get yourself prepared to do that and do it because you are a model to your children. Your children will see how are you doing it? What are you doing? I always tell my students, do not read the Quran from your iPad or from the uh, phone. Children will be thinking, your children, when they see you all the time all, 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 on, on your uh, devices, they think you are wasting your time. Let your children see that you are holding the Holy Quran in your hands and you are reading it aloud. Be a good mother. Show them that you love Allah. Show them that you love his prophet. Show them that you love the Quran. So they will do the same as you. And let your work be sincere for the, for the, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to end up our session today, I would like to remind you of an amazing good news that the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in one of the narrations. Once a companion asked the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he, uh, uh, he told him, when is the day of judgment? So the Prophet sallallahu said to him, what have you prepared for it? And the companion said, I did not prepare much except that I love Allah and his messenger. So the Prophet said to him, on the day of judgment, one shall be resurrected with whom he loves. What an amazing, great, good news is that. Ya Allah. 
we witness that we love your prophet sallallahu we witness that you we love your beloved sallallahu we ask you ya allah to keep us steady fast on the right path on his path his path that will make us winners in the day of judgment ya allah we want we want you to help us love you we want you to help us love sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we want you to help us love the quran we want you to help us raise good righteous children whom sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam will be happy with on the day of judgment who will, they will be coolness to his eye ya arham rahimin So here we are raising our hands. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us true love. True love with which we will be closer to him. True love that will make us love Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the same way his companions loved him. Ya Allah. You said, Ya Allah, ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am to my slave as he thinks of me. And our thinking of you, Ya Allah, is that we are, we are sure that you will fulfill our du'as. You will fulfill our sincere du'as. We want, we want to be uh, united with Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, in this dunya and in the day after. We want to feel his closeness to us. We want to feel that he is witnessing, witnessing over everything that we are doing. Inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira. He is a witness. And a witness cannot be a witness if he doesn't see what he is going to witness on. So he is alive with us. He is overwatching everything. And he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, تُعْرَضُ عَلَيَّ أَعْمَالُكُمْ فَمَا وَجَدْتُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ حَمَدْتُ اللَّهُ وَمَا وَجَدْتُ لَكُمْ مِنْ شَرٍ استغفرتُ استغفرتُ لَكُمْ Your deeds will be presented to me. If I find something good, I will thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if I find something bad that you have done, then I will ask Allah for forgiveness for you. Ya Allah, resurrect us with your habib. Keep us with him on the day of judgment. Keep us with him on the, lay, on the day after. Keep us with him on the next life, Ya Arham al-Rahimin. We were not his companions in this dunya, in this life. But we want to be his companions in the hereafter. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. Wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.